One of the things you could do is buy gold. But what happens when the United States buys gold? The dollar price of gold goes up and the brick gets stronger and the dollar gets weaker. So now back to the BRICS. They yeah. replicated the World Bank. They replicated the IMF. Now they're coming out with a new currency. BRICS currency. Now here's where here's where it gets really interesting. And I tell people, I said, if you want to understand this, uh, it took me a long time to figure this out. I mean, I was just like slaving over it. But I said, if you want to understand this, you have to stop thinking like an American. You have to start thinking like a Russian. This is the kind of thing that pretty much only Russia could come up with. So what is the BRICS currency? And by the way, I don't know if they're going to call it a brick. I'm saying brick for convenience. It doesn't matter what they call it, but I just call it a brick for the time being, but they'll, they'll come up with a name. Who knows? The value of the brick is not determined with reference to any other currency. It's determined with reference to gold by weight of gold. And I don't know the weight. They'll pick one. But again, it doesn't matter because now we're back to Aristotle's transitive law. This is the key. This unlocks the whole thing because Aristotle said, you know, if A equals B equals C, then A equals C. The B can drop out. It's not even arithmetic. It's, it's logic. It's called the transitive law. I'm, I'm, I'm certain that Aristotle invented it. If any Greek scholars know an earlier source, let me know. So what the BRICS have done is they have dodged the biggest bullet, the thing that caused Bretton Woods ultimately to fail, the thing that potentially stands in the way of all this. They've defined their currency by weight of gold. Now, a weight of gold has a dollar value, right? So A equals B equals C. One brick equals one, could be an ounce or a kilo, doesn't matter. You call it an ounce. One brick equals one ounce of gold equals today, 1970. Well, through the transitive law, drop out the B and one brick equals 1970, $1,970. But that's constant. I mean, that logic works for a moment in time, but it's not fixed. Because the price of gold is going to fluctuate daily, minute by minute, right? So what's going to happen is the dollar gold call it exchange rate, the dollar price of gold. So the LBMA, the COMEX, the London Metals Exchange, you know, JP Morgan on allocated forward contracts, the whole huge gold market in dollars is still going to exist. In fact, uh, the BRICS want it to exist. And if, if I could just digress for one minute, I've never seen an international monetary economic problem that has created more confusion. I won't say misinformation, that's a little trite, but just confusion or maybe deliberate hyperbole than this one. Because let me tell you what this is not. I'm going to tell you what it is, but it's important to know what it's not. This is not the petro yuan. This is not the petro ruble. This is not a gold back yuan. This is not a gold standard. This is not the end of the U.S. dollar. It's not the end of the euro. It's not the end of the world. It's not any of those things. But that's what everyone's running around on websites or whatever shouting. About. It's none of those things. In fact, quite the opposite. And this is where the Russian mentality comes in. The BRICS want the dollar to be around. They want the dollar gold market to exist because they get to free ride. The dollar has to do all the dirty work in the gold space and bricks get the free ride by declaring one brick equal to a weight of gold. Again, weight's the key. They just let the dollar gold market go wherever it goes and the brick is worth an ounce or whatever, kilo, whatever. And uh, yeah, the dollar equivalent under the transit of law changes, but they're not pegged to the dollar. They're not fighting that fight. In other words, the bricks get to free ride on the dollar gold system. And they want that system. They don't want it to go away because they get the benefit of a gold value. Now think of what the BRICS don't have to do in this scenario. They don't have to buy gold. They don't even have to own gold. They do, but no one in the world has enough gold to back a currency. This currency, the BRIC, will not be redeemable into gold. Now maybe there's a dealer somewhere who will take it. That's between you and, and the dealer. But it's not like you're going to be able to march down to the People's Bank of China with a pile of bricks and say, give me the gold. They're not going to do it. So it's not redeemable. They're not going to make a market. They're not going to maintain a value because they don't have to because it's by weight. They just get to sit back and piggyback on the dollar gold system and let the dollar do all the dirty work with one twist. And this is, here's the Russian contribution. So you don't have to close your capital account. You can close it, open it, whatever. You don't have to buy gold. You don't have to make a market. You don't, you don't even need that much gold. You just say, this is the ultimate fiat currency. The word fiat in Latin means I say so. Well, they, they say so, and there it is. Basically, this is a bet. This is a bet that the dollar is going to collapse against gold over time, over time. Mm -hmm.
I think that's a very good bet. This is not a three month forecast. I'm not saying gold is going to go up or down the next week. Who knows? But over time, now we're into what? Debt to GDP ratios, annual deficits, uh, dare I say, modern monetary theory. I mean, all the, all these ideas are ruining the dollar and everyone can see it, but not yet. And so if you want to launch this new currency and you say, Hey, long term, the dollar is going to collapse in terms of gold. I'll hook my horse to this wagon called gold by weight and I'll just reap the benefits and mm -hmm. I don't have to do a thing. And so that you're defining it by weight. So you, you know, the, the dollar gold market goes where it goes, but you don't really have to worry about it because you're, you're anchored to weight. But here's, here's the twist. Uh, and this is how it's going to play out. Now you're the United States. So you're like, looks like I've been painted into a corner. What can I do? Well, one of the things you could do, I've told the Treasury this for years, they don't listen. I mean, they invite me in, but they don't listen. One of the things you could do is buy gold. But what happens when the United States buys gold? The dollar price of gold goes up and the brick gets stronger and the dollar gets weaker. Checkmate. In other words, the U.S. is now in a box where you can't even get out of it by buying gold because you're going to you're going to weaken your own currency relative to gold in the process and the BRICS are just going to sit there and not lift a finger. So it's genius. I, I got to credit the Russians. I'm not saying the Chinese couldn't think of something like this, but this has got Russia's fingerprints all over it. OK, people have been talking about this for 20 years. You know, the Great Reset, uh, the end of the dollar, the collapse of the dollar, gold to the moon, et cetera. And it's never played out. And the reason are some of the ones, which is the dollar has these huge embedded advantages in the form of its reserve currency status, not because everyone loves the dollar or they even love the United States, but because we have the only uh, bond market big enough to absorb global savings. The U.S. Treasury market is huge. It is liquid, but it's got a whole infrastructure Uh Primary dealers that bid at auction, uh, when issue trading, settlement, clearance, futures hedging, options hedging, uh, depository trust corporation, settlement, on and on and on. It's got this huge infrastructure of you know, laws, rules, and regulations that they've been building for a long time. I would say 200, um, you know, 37 years since uh, Alexander Hamilton. But above all, it has the rule of law that people just trust it. Don't have to like the dollar, don't have to like the United States, but you trust the market. The U.S., in response to the war in Ukraine, broke the trust. They froze the U.S. Treasury assets of the Central Bank of Russia. Unprecedented. And I'm, I'm a sanctions expert. I work for the intelligence community. It was part of what I did was, you know, look at sanctions and, and CFIUS and, and a lot else. And as far as I'm concerned, and I think I know that our BRICS friends agree, that's a default. You know, maybe S&P would call it a selective default. But Russia made the money. They bought the treasuries they're entitled to principal and interest and we're saying no you can't have the principal and interest we're not paying you well that's a default i don't care how janet yellen wants to dress it up and it was a shock but worse than that everyone else in the world was watching saudi arabia india brazil malaysia and they're saying and turkey and and others and they're saying to themselves what if the united states doesn't like what i did what if they don't like my policy are they going to freeze my treasuries? Well, until a year ago, you would say, well, of course not. They would never do that. Well, they did in the case of Russia, and they will uh, potentially in the case of these other countries. So that was the catalyst. The idea of getting out from under the dollar, yeah, it's been around a long time. The feasibility of that was limited, capped really, by the absence of a bond market big enough to absorb global savings. But now the countries are saying, well, what good is it to have my savings in treasuries if you're just going to steal them? So I'll, maybe I'm not saying BRICS are wonderful all out of the out of the gate, but at least it's not dollars. At least it's not maintained on a digital ledger at the U.S. Treasury, and at least you can't steal it. And so that was the catalyst that drove this thing from a 17-year project to hey, warp speed, let's get it yeah. done. How do we do it? And there we are.